up, everybody? This is Kayla, and you are listening in to the Live Unlimited Coaching channel, and we have a special guest here today, one of my really good friends, Joe. Um, he's also a coach, and he is on here, and he's going to talk about kind of his process and his big beliefs when it comes to dieting and nutrition and fitness and what it should look like and why it should look that way and why it shouldn't look the way that most people think it should look. And um, we're going to go from there. So Joe, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and give people a background on, you know, who you are and kind of what got you into health and fitness? Absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for having me. And I think as we get further into this, all of you are longtime listeners are going to say you and I sound really similar because I think you and I have a lot of the same beliefs. But a little background on me, um, growing up, I was always the skinny kid. I graduated high school at about 135 pounds and I'm just under six feet tall, six feet tall. And so I didn't want to be that skinny kid. I had older brothers. They told me I was too small. I had friends and they had older brothers and they told me I was too small. And so obviously as a, as a boy growing up, you want to look like the comic book characters or like Arnold and... I just couldn't do it. I, I would go to the gym every day since I was 13 years old. I would eat everything in sight and it never worked. And eventually it worked and it worked so well that I blew right past my goal and ballooned up to about 220, 225 pounds. Um, so I went from too skinny to being overweight. And once again, I wasn't super happy with myself and now I had a new problem to solve. So I had to figure out how to lose weight Eventually I did. Um, that happened in college after my heavy partying days. Um, and I just had to take some nutrition courses, some anatomy and physiology courses. And I had a whole lot of never give up built into me. Um, and eventually, gosh, around 23 years old, I would say, I got to a physique that I was pretty proud of, pretty happy with, and I could maintain. And ever since then, it's just been that slow, steady process of continuing to live that lifestyle that I've fallen in love with. And so that's kind of my background. I love it. I love it. So when you, how long have you been coaching? Five and a half years. Five and a half years. Have you always done it this way or have you done like different facets of coaching? Cause there's lots of different ways you can coach, right? Yeah. So when I first started, I didn't have the education I have now. Yeah. And when I first started, the current me hates the original me. Um, mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of things wrong. It wasn't on purpose, right? My intentions were always good. But like I said, I just didn't have the education I had. And so people were eating way less food than they should be. Um, and yeah, I mean, they saw results, but they didn't stick. They, ru they kind of ruined their metabolisms. And so now I'm doing things the right way and undoing everything I did before and then helping ladies that have done that with other coaches as well. Yeah. I like it. So when you, you work with mostly women. Yeah. Um, so I started doing group challenges and to be honest, in the beginning, I thought I wanted to work with men that were kind of like me. They just want to be really muscular. And for some reason, all the moms flocked to me. <laughs> Yeah. So it was like, it was a lot of moms. There's a lot of ladies, 40 to 50 years old. And I really started to resonate with them. And the reason I think that is, is because I mentioned earlier, when I was 13 years old, I stepped foot in the gym. And the reason I stepped foot in the gym is because one night I was bored. It's like, mom, I'm kind of bored. What should I do? She's like, well, I'm going to the gym. Do you want to come? And thanks to her, literally this entire process of who I am today, where I am today, is probably because of her. And mm -hmm. so I think that's why I resonated well with these ladies. And I know that's why that today I work with moms. I work with ladies 40 plus that are either entering menopause or already past menopause because I want to give back. Like if I can help a mom become confident and strong and happy and healthy, I guarantee that's also going to trickle down into their family and her sons and her daughters, and maybe it's going to help somebody like me. Yeah, that's cool. You kind of full circle. Exactly. I like that. What's your, how many, or well, so what do you call your current coaching program? 
Uh, so we call it the fit for life program mm -hmm. because we're trying to be fit for life. I mean, that says it all, right? <laughs> yeah. So if there were like limiting beliefs or maybe not limiting beliefs, but beliefs in the industry, if you had the power to just like get rid of some crazy beliefs out there, what would the beliefs be and why? I would love to hear your opinion on this too. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this okay. question back to you, but <laughs> the first belief is like, I can eat 800 calories, 1000 calories, 1200 calories, even up to 1500 calories a day for the rest of my life and be just fine. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. do it. And the thing I like to put into perspective is I have a little border collie at my feet right now. For anybody that knows what a border collie looks like, they're not big dogs. She weighs 42 pounds. Right. Her calorie intake is 1,200 calories. I also have a little nephew. I measured him the other day. He was 32 inches tall. Mm -hmm. His calorie intake is 1,300 calories. And so what I like to say to the ladies that listen to me is if you're not 32 inches tall and you don't weigh 42 pounds, you probably need more food than that. I like that. That's so true. <laughs> So yeah, no more restrictive calories for long periods of time or the rest of your life. What's another one? What's Just, another one? What's another one? Carbs. Carbs are the devil. Said yes. nobody ever, or nobody should ever say. Right. Um, actually, just before this, I was 10 minutes late to meeting with Kayla because I was talking with somebody and she told me, she's like, ah, well, I, I try to have my carbs in the morning because I know if I have them at night, it's not going to be good for me. And mm -hmm. we had to kind of break that belief for her. And so it's not just her. It's almost every single person I talk to, they think carbs are bad. And in reality, we will either double, triple, quadruple the amount of carbs that our clients have, depending on where they are when they come to us. And then we also double, triple, and quadruple their quality of life because of it. When, um, oh, I just lost my question. What other beliefs do we have? What? Like, well, there's one that, I, well, the carb one drives me crazy. Um, that's a good one. I think one that I wish I could break for people is that if you're eating healthy, you must be trying to achieve a particular outcome you know like like they can't just eat healthy just for the sake of eating healthy it has to be in order to lose weight right you know like oh healthy eating you're like oh you must be on a diet why are you on a diet what are you trying to do it's like i'm not i'm just actually eating normal you know just enjoy this, this, this and is, i'm trying to live a long time yeah i'm trying to live a long time or um that it has to be complicated I think that's the biggest one. Like if I could break it down to just one phrase is that it in general, fitness and health has to be complicated, you know, because when I get on assessments with people and we're just giving them a free advice, I usually, I honestly break it down to usually like one of five things that I, and I usually give them one or two to run with. Right. And usually they leave with like, Oh, well, that was, why haven't I been doing that? You know, but we build it up in our brains like, oh, I have to be strength training a specific way because this is what TikTok influencer number set one said. And then if I'm not eating, if I'm eating rice or bread or sugar, then I'm doing it wrong. And something's, you know, I should just cut all that stuff out completely. And like, it just feels complicated, you know, and it doesn't have to be. It can just no. be. Just live normal, please, you know? No, I love that because if it really was complicated, you and myself and everybody else that is teaching this probably wouldn't be successful at maintaining it, right? We only do things that are simple. Yeah. And there's lots of different simple ways to do things. Like simple looks different for everybody, right? Like I had a client, she, she's been with us for two years now. And she, um, <clears throat> she wanted to try like just eating intuitively, you know, and she's tracked her calories 
and her macros pretty solid, you know, for a long period of time, you know? And so we allowed her to do that, but trying to eat intuitively was actually more complicated for her. Do you know what I mean? And so I was like, if it, if you don't like it, just track. And she's like, well, but then like, am I, is it, she was so, she didn't want to be like tied to the app. And I was like, do you feel better when you know what your intake, when you know, like you are a data driven person and you know what your intake is. And she's like, yeah, I feel more confident. I said, so what's the problem? Someone else doesn't like it and it's complicated and likes intuitively eating and likes doing it that way. It's okay to like doing it this way, you know? And she was like, Oh, I just thought it would be like obsessive. And I'm like, do you know how many different ways there are to budget (laughs) your money? You know, going there. I was just going to go there. Yeah. Like some people use an app. Some people write it down. Some people, you know, use credit cards. Some people don't It like, it doesn't, there's lots of different ways. So it's, you just have to pick what feels the best for you. What feels most natural. And then be okay with that being normal. You know, literally everybody that's successful in finance tracks their finances Mm -hmm. and nobody tells them they're obsessive. They say, Oh my God, how are you so wealthy? They're like, well, I've paid attention to this for years. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. How are you so fit? Well, I've paid attention to this for years. It's not obsessive. It's not obsessive. Well, and there's lots of different ways to pay attention to it. You know? And so I think that's because some people do like the hand portion measuring thing, you know, which I would argue like that's more intuitively eating. Like you're like, well, I've had, like you're at least being aware, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> rather than like, anyway, but yeah, like you have to find what works for you and it doesn't have to be complicated and it can be as simple and natural. It should feel natural to you. Absolutely. Um, that's probably the biggest belief. And that there's like good or bad fo- and bad foods, you know, like another good one. It's just food. It's how good, like, we put everything. I had one, uh, my nutrition coach that I hired, the first one I hired for myself after I had Stryker, he was like, nothing is good or bad. It's how good is it or how bad is it? And it puts it on a spectrum. So, like, people will tell me, you know, like, well, you throw diet soda under the bus, right? Like, people are like, oh, diet soda is terrible for you. It's like, compared to water right you know (laughs) yeah but if you're going to drink something other than water it's better than regular soda yeah Yeah. or like a liter of vodka or a liter of vodka (laughs) yeah like people are like oh but you know this is so bad for you and it's like compared to what compared to what it's a choice you know like it'd be great if nobody drank alcohol nobody drank any kind of soda at all and everyone just drank water and lemon water and fresh squeezed juice you know whatever it's like yeah that'd be great but i think that's an unrealistic expectation for yourself yeah you keep taking the words out of my mouth like that's also unrealistic to never think you're gonna have a soda or a brownie or whatever it is that you like Mm -hmm. at night if you do something where they don't allow you to have thing you like in the evening or in the morning or on the weekend that's unrealistic right we want to do it forever and the only way to do it forever is by to is to enjoy like allow yourself to enjoy those things every once in a while yeah and that's not bad exactly what's been your favorite part of coaching i'm gonna ask (laughs) you what your favorite and then your least favorite changing lives right i mean And for those of you who, for those people that are like, how is that life changing? If you see somebody that wakes up every day and they pull 10 pairs of clothes out of the closet just to find one to go to work and that one pair of clothes that they put on, it doesn't make them feel great. It just makes it so that they don't have to hide themselves all day long. Mm -hmm. And that can allow them to be more confident at work and they do better at work and they get a raise or they quit and they find a job they like or they have more energy and they can keep up with their kids or we fix their metabolism. They have more energy. They have more sex drive. They get a better relationship with their husband. Instead of getting a divorce, they fall in love again. Like 
these things change their lives. And are, no, what were you going to ask? So how are those not life changing is the question. <laughs> right. But do you have like a specific client transformation or um, experience or life changing event that sticks out to you the most when if someone would be like, what well, you know, who's been your favorite client to work with and why? That's hard. We, we've had a lot of people that have done some incredible stuff. Yeah. Um, two ladies I can think of, I guess that come to mind, both of them lost a hundred pounds or over a hundred pounds. One of them is now a running coach and runs marathons multiple times a year. Um, and it's just incredible. Like, so she inspires me because mm -hmm. I am not a runner. And the other lady, she, she was recommended by a friend, a mutual friend, and she was really hesitant to join us. She's like, Joe, I don't even know how to cook a meal. Like, I don't know why I have pots and pans. I don't know why I have an oven. I've literally never cooked a thing in my life. It's like, all right, well, we can teach you. She's like, I doubt it. It's like, okay. Well, give me time. She's mm -hmm. like, also, I've never been to the gym. It's like, okay, well, number one, you don't have to go. But if you want to, I'm happy to help. She's going to small group training three to five times a week now. She's cooking her and her son meals every single night now. And every Thursday morning, she's still getting her weekly Dunkin' Donuts treat for herself. Mm -hmm. But now she's 100 pounds lighter. And she's going on dates and she's extremely confident. And it j literally just gives me goosebumps to think about. Isn't that awesome? Yep. What's your least part, least favorite part of being a coach? So there's not many anymore because we just don't accept people if we see yeah. what I'm about to explain. Mm -hmm. But the least favorite part used to be me committing my time to somebody that didn't want to be there. Yeah. And I have no idea why they would invest in themselves and into our program in the first place that they didn't want to be there. But week after week, they would either not show up or they would show up with none of their homework done. And I had a promise I made to them. I was like, hey, I'm going to show up every week and give you exactly what you need to succeed. Yeah. And I mean, God, for, for 26 weeks, sometimes I would show up for 30 minutes every week for somebody that didn't do anything. And I would just have a, the same conversation. Um, and I mean, truly it was no sweat off my back, but it just bothered me. Like I want it. I'm here to change a life. And if you don't want it changed, that's fine. Like you'll be ready in a year or two, but don't, don't waste both of our time right now. And that just sucked. But like I said, if we see that now, we'll call them on it. We'll tell them like, Hey, I don't think you're right for the program right now. And that's fine. It's not a bad thing. When you are, you can come back and here's a list of coaches that I think might be better for you for now. Yeah. So that it just doesn't happen anymore. I think a lot of us deal with that in a lot of different ways, but yeah, I would agree. Wanting it more than they want it. Yep. Wanting it for them more than they want it. Or, or because sometimes they just don't at all which sucks. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, so tell people where they can find you and, um, yeah, best way to get in touch with you if they want to know more about your program, where they can hear more from you, all that stuff. For sure. Yeah. So if you want to learn anything about this, you can find me just at Joe Hoy on Facebook. That's where I post all of the, valuable things that you can actually put into your life. If you want to see what my life is like, find me on Instagram. That is Hoy Fit. Um, it should be a business page, but it's really just me working out and playing with our dog. <laughs> and then Even better. If you'd like to join our group. Uh, maybe we can link that down below. Yep. We can link it. Um, and then thanks for tuning in. And then we will catch you all in the next episode.